Hi guys, I'm Kim and you're watching Kim Wilson TV. My channel is dedicated to helping victims of narcissistic abuse get free, stay free, and never have to repeat this uh, terribly, terribly destructive uh, situation ever again in your lifetime. <laughs> Now this is part three of a closer examination of the four steps in the narcissist relationship cycle. Now uh, we've discussed uh, that initial uh, love bombing and idealization, which was truly nothing more than a game to trap you. They presented a fake person to you to suck you in, okay, to pull you down into their their horrible darkness, and uh, nothing more than a trap to abuse you. Now we've moved into uh, the devaluing stage, which is where you can really see that they never actually loved you. What they actually do is hate you. They're bitterly envious of you. They did from the beginning perceive you to be better than them, and they will not fucking have that. So now all that stuff they built up, they have to dismantle, and they absolutely are going to just fucking crush you, because they do truly hate you. They are truly envious of you. They sense in you an ability to love and to be kind and to be patient. None of this is good to them. This is all a source of great envy and bitterness and hatred, and they truly uh, do not like that about you, so they need to dismantle that, make you frightened, make you weak, make you feel shamed, humiliated in public, and all of these are steps in that devaluation stage. I'm sure many of you have noticed that uh, public humiliation and all of these terrible things that they do. Now, because the devaluation stage is actually the entry into the dumping, they are very, very likely already cheating or already drumming up new supply, getting back in touch with the Narcarum and making sure that they've got a line of victims ready for when the dumping comes around. Now, sadly, as part of the devaluing stage, the lying has definitely increased. The gaslighting has increased. We got that sweet mean cycle going, pushing, pulling, future faking. You know, when they sense that you're on to them and they're not quite ready to dump you, maybe their next victim's not lined up yet, uh, they're going to start future faking you. Now, they're very likely cheating and possibly have been the entire time. The fact that you were taken as primary supply does not indicate for one second that they ever let go of the narc harem. Most certainly Trevor never did. And Trevor would leave telltale signs that he was cheating or back in touch with the narc harem all the time. Uh, not necessarily because he wanted to get caught cheating. He certainly wanted me to be unsettled. Now, I know this sounds like absolute fucking insanity. Why would somebody have someone fall deeply in love with them, be willing to to provide them with, you know, so much love, so much compassion, so much understanding, only to beat them mentally, emotionally, psychologically, physically, to discard them to move on to the next victim. Uh, it just, it it's so hard to understand, but we are dealing, you know, you're looking at borderline personality here, like that border is psychotic thinking. Uh, narcissistic personality disorder, absolute psychotic thinking. So you are dealing with someone whose thinker is fucking twisted in a knot, absolutely. You're dealing with a very, very sick individual. Now, as they're doing things to you that are, you know, sending up red flags and you're going to them with issues and they're gaslighting the shit out of you and you're crying a lot and you're sad a lot, this is really where they want you. Now, this can go on for months, years, it, like decades. If you are in a completely broken, miserable state, they can just leave you in that wallowing in misery, absolutely in a vampire feeding frenzy really, really feeling satisfied uh, by, by your demise. And all the while, just, you know, uh, going to find sex supplies somewhere else. Now, keep in mind, I know the cheating is terribly painful, and I'll tell you it hurt me quite a bit. But I've really come to realize that 
everyone is a tool of masturbation to Trevor. I, I truly don't care anymore. I'm just, you know, if he's having sex with anybody, God, I'm just glad it's not me. That's all. Like, I just, it, the whole thing uh, just gets to a point of such crazy making. You know, you can say the narc, hey, did you uh, remember to water the tomatoes, which then turns into a full-blown fight where now you're cheating and all hell's breaking loose and they're off now having an affair. Like, the whole thing just blows up up so quickly over nothing. Why? Because these cluster Bs are gravely, gravely ill. I mean, you're trying to make sense of insanity, but sure as shit, you are now in the throes of being dumped. And whether this takes a month, a year, or a decade, the dumping process is underway and all the bullshit that comes with that. Now, when I say that they're going to dump you and discard you and move on to the next victim... <laughs> Oddly, this is this is very perplexing. Oddly, we are the next victim and the next victim and the next victim. I mean, this is a real fucking enigma, my friends. Now, Trevor and I went through, you know, initially the four-step cycle. I left. Of course, he went and got some emergency secondary, you know, um, you know, emergency supply. Well, that supply was not filling my shoes, so out with that supply really fast, glom back on to me, and there I was again. And we started the four-step cycle again. Well, you know, then I'd go again because he had just done some fucking crazy horrendous thing, and I just couldn't take it anymore. And then he'd go find some low-grade secondary supply that was just kind of emergency, like, you know, quick feast of human flesh and human souls, and out with that again. And back on to me again. I mean, this went on for five years. The reality is, Trevor had never found supply like I provided. He's never going to. So, you know, I know that he is just in a whipped up frenzy of, you know, trying to reel the narc harem back in, trying to love bomb this new one, you know, feeling her out for supply. Now, of course, he's got the new one already set up as a flying monkey. I don't know if you guys have noticed some of those, you know, nasty, nasty comments that Trevor's new flying monkey victim has been leaving, but I made it very clear to him that if he allows her or encourages her to leave one more fucking comment on my my uh, channel here, that he is in for an awakening a little bit uh, more startling than that little coward is actually ready for. So they have stopped. Now, you can get kind of sucked into their pity pot and think, oh, poor little, you know, traumatized infant grew up to be all fucked up. But guess what? They know exactly what they're doing. The other anomaly here, which is really fucking weird, is they believe their lies. They actually believe this shit. One of Trevor's favorite things to say to me was, you should have believed me. You should have believed me. You should believe me. And I would say to him, you know, Trevor, it's not that I don't want to believe you. I would like very much to believe you, but the fact is, I have an above average IQ. I am a critical thinker. It is absolutely fucking impossible for me to believe the impossible. It, the unbelievable is simply unbelievable to me. And that was his whole mantra. It was, you know, he lied and I was supposed to believe it. And when I didn't believe it, he would become absolutely fucking incest. Oh, the punishment was coming then. Because it was my job to just believe the unbelievable. Well, I never believed it. And well, as it turns out, so Captain Fuckhead can go fuck himself, and I still do not believe the unbelievable. Now, you might ask yourself, how can this completely soul-dead, vacant creature know exactly what they're doing, know right from wrong, but at the same time believe their lies? Now, let's consider the lies. The lie, the entire prospect of tricking people, the concept of fooling people, the lies are their soul. It is the foundation from which they exist. It is all of it to them. Lying creates that fake image. Lying holds up that bubble. Lying is a means of trapping new supply. Lying is the way to get what they want, which is just souls. They want to consume souls. They are gluttons of human souls. 
They just love misery. They love to create misery. They love to create chaos. This is what they're all about. So you'd ask yourself, how could they believe the lie? Well, of course they believe the lie. The lie is real to them. That fake image that they've created for the world is real to them. The act of hooking you and abusing you and discarding you, this is all part of a very real uh, life experience to them. The lies are real to them. I, I couldn't believe the bullshit, but Trevor apparently believes the unbelievable. Now, you might ask yourself, how could they possibly believe their own lies when clearly they know right from wrong? Uh, they know that they're crossing a moral line every time they do it. They know that. And they just don't give a fuck because their need to hurt you so outweighs this. And their need to be robo shitheads to this enslavement, to this obsessive and compulsive, you know, need, desperate need to just keep looping and looping until they just fall down this fucking black hole of absolute terror. I mean, they're, they're, they're scared to death, and they know what they're doing, and they just can't stop. And yes, they believe the lies. Everything about them is a lie. From early infancy, when they split and created this false persona, this is their whole life, the foundation, their soul, everything, from what they move forward from, everything that is their foundation and backbone is the lie. It's all about the lie. Creating a fake illusion, presenting something false to the world, holding up that fake illusion, lying to you, tricking to you, uh, tricking you, maneuvering you uh, back into their life over and over again, the manip manipulation, the mind control, the domination, like they believe their lies. The lie is very real to them. How they think people see them is real to them. How they're presenting themselves to the world is real to them. All that stuff that they're doing but blaming you for, that is real to them. They're, they're nuts. They're absolutely fucking nuts. And I'm sorry every one of us ever crossed paths with one of these demon-possessed fucking freaks. Now, one of the real tragedies about this whole um, obsessive, compulsive dumping process, and they're doing this really whether they want to or not, almost robotically. Now, you have to understand that one of their core fears is abandonment. And they know that um, they have no moral compass. They know that this is very boundaryless behavior, but they're doing it anyways. They're no, knowingly crossing every line of morality and decent human behavior, and they know it. But you've got to realize that they are scared to fucking death. They are so scared. And that's why they're flailing and acting out in all this madness, because now the noise is getting louder and louder, and now they're going to be abandoned at their own doing. And... You're scared and they're scared and there's all this static and friction going on. It truly is an absolutely horrendous situation. And, you know, I guess for me it just comes down to do I feel sorry for Trevor? Absolutely fuck no. This is one of those cases, well, all of our cases are one of those cases, where the abused or the victimized becomes um, an abuser. Like... They could go get help. They could, you know, do something to develop a set of breaks, but they don't. They're just free-falling, just absolutely free-falling down this pit of doom over and over and over again. And all the stress and confusion and hurt and all that narcissistic injury they suffer as a result of it. But they won't get help. They can't be helped. They're fucked in the noggin, and basically it is what it is. They're, you know, Trevor is just a giant meatball stuffed full of fuck. I don't know.